All right, happy autumn. I would love to be outside right now, showing you the leaves, but it's darn cold, so I'm doing this one inside. Uh, we're going to get into the autumn mood, Hyojo, okay? You'll have to imagine what I can see outside if I go to the park. All the leaves are now turned like kind of golden, yellow, red, uh, lots of different colors, lots of leaves falling down, sticks, walnuts on the ground, crows picking them up and dropping them to smash them. Crows are very smart, right? I guess they're kind of ravens over here in Japan. We've got these big crows that are more like ravens, I guess. And, uh... Yeah, their voices are... I'm not sure if you could say they're beautiful or not, but I like them nonetheless. So, we're going to work on Hyojo Netori, okay? Netori, the Netori listed in here are something that I still haven't really figured out, to be honest with you. Each mode has Netori in Ryo and Ritsu. Um, but the differences between the Ryo and Ritsu modes, or, or the Ryo and Ritsu scales, is not always so clear. It seems, according to musicologists that I know anyway, that some of these melodies were basically made by ear, and sometimes it's hard to tell which is which, although the scales are slightly distinct. They kind of run into each other, so you can't always tell them apart very well. In this case, we've got the Ryo scale and the Yuritsu scale for the Hyojo mode. I'm going to use the Ryo one because it somehow sounds like it fits the tunes better. According to other things that I've read, again, the uh, Netori scales, the, or the Netori pieces, right, they are uncountable. There are just so many of them that we can't even count them, so here's a couple that I'm putting in this book. This is what a lot of the authors say. So it may not really matter which one we use. And even if we use the wrong one, who is going to come back from 300 years ago to tell us about it? Still, something to kind of ponder over anyway. Alright, so first of all, before we even get into that, let's get over into the, the scale that we're going to be playing in the Hyojo mode, okay? Here's the way we get the, the modes, right? You'll remember the Oshiki mode is something like this. That's the basic Ritsu scale, and you get the different modes by transposing that Ritsu scale to a different whole, okay? Um, Hyojo is the note that you find it's basically an E. If you're covering the top two holes, that's the Hyojo note. Uh, again, this seems to be considered this, you still call it that even though it's actually a different pitch, even if you're using a different size Hitayugiri, you still consider that Hyojo for the purposes of, um, you know, how we arrange the scales on the flute. Alright, so that's the Hyojo note. We want to start a Ritsu scale on that note. Right? That's what it should sound like. Let's see if we can do that. that we can get the whole scale up there, except, wait, what about these three holes down here? Well, basically the scale wraps around to the bottom again, right? So we've got... Right, then go back to all holes closed. You hear how that's the same thing? took it, the top three notes down an octave, right? So they kind of wrap around to the bottom of the flute. So if you're playing, according to the flute, it ends up giving you something kind of unique. So what are we going to do there? So we're playing the bottom note, this just as we always do, pretty straightforward. The overall feeling of this, this mode is that you're kind of 
playing it a little bit midi, right? You're kind of bringing your head down a little bit, generally speaking. first transition to the first note from the bottom to the first note with the first hole open you don't really have to do anything special this note is on the banshiki hole by the way uh, the oldest manual says banshiki o haru right to haru means to play it sharp or to play it strong and this note in this case my interpretation is to play it strong this note is kind of the core note in the piece so when you come to this hole right with the first hole open it's kind of a strong note it's a central note to any of the pieces in the hyojo mode all right the third note instead of a d you're kind of going down a half step with this one okay this is different from how we play it in the Yoshiki mode. In Yoshiki, we played it like this. We played that kind of sharp. But now we're going to actually bring our head down a little bit. Right. Now it's going to jump an extra half step to, went up to the uh, next note, so we're going to have to play that next one a little sharp. See that? Alright, and then in the next, if we play that with the bottom four holes open, it's a little too sharp. So we put this finger down, our second finger is closed, and the back hole is closed. And it should sound like this. Okay, so all of them closed. First hole open, first two holes open, first three holes open, first four holes open, but the second hole gets closed. Alright, and then the octave above the bottom note, you're going to close the fourth hole from the bottom on the front with the rest of them open. In this case, in the Oshiki mode, we played the higher, the upper octave of the Banshiki note with all the holes open. We played that a little bit sharp. In the Hyojo mode, we're just going to play that with the bottom three holes covered and the top two open, and it's going to sound the same. Tone color is a little different though, right? You hear the difference there? Got a little bit of a hollow sound to it on this Hita Yogiri anyway. I like that. So let's play the whole scale up to there. And again, as always, depending on your flute, you might have to play this a little bit lower, you might have to play it a little bit higher by, a, you know, just a few microtones in there. Um, not every Hita Yogiri is going to play at exactly the same pitch and that is okay. Not every person is exactly the same either. Alright, so let's take a look at the Netori. I kind of like the first one, the Ryo Netori. It seems to fit better with the pieces, so we're going to do that. So if you've got the Netori page, it's actually the first one on that list. Um, on, by first one, I mean the rightmost one. All right. We've got E Ho Ho U Ho Ho. E, 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 Ho, E. Right, and that kind of, that central note, the Ho, is kind of playing a central role in that, and it plays a central role on the pieces that we're going to play too, so this kind of matches the pieces that we're going to play. It's a good netori to play with these two. times, okay? Remember, when we see that E character, right, the E 
is played with all holes open and it kind of bends upwards, right? It bends upwards. What we played before, it's basically the same pitch as the note he. He and Oshki was played with all holes open, but he were playing with the bottom three holes closed in this case. Alright, let's play that again. E ho ho, u ho ho. E e e e e ho e. start to feel like you want to play it in a certain way. So go ahead, play it a couple of times and see how it wants to be played. And if we want to play that as the prelude to a piece, we can do it like we did before, right? Remember that? We play uh, Tsutsune, we play the Netori, we play Tsutsune, we play Shirabe, we play Tsutsune. Alright, remember the Shirabe is played as e chi 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 um, The reason that that's called Shirabe, I think, is that no matter what mode you play it in, it's going to sound the same. E pretty much always seems to have the same pitch. Uh, and she always seems to have the same relationship to E, so you can play that for any of the moves. Let's play that again. Here we go. We'll do the whole thing. So there you have it, and Emma's home. So I'll say goodbye for now. Cheers, everybody.